Good afternoon, everyone. It's Professor Williams here again. And today you have caught me on a day when I am mad at the squirrels in my yard. So what I have is I have these squirrels that have invaded my yard. And they're eating all of the birds, bird food. So I want to locate the feeders so that they can't jump from the fence and from the bird bath and from the tree onto my feeders. So taking a statistics approach to this, I decide that if I can find out the average deviation or the average variation in the distance they can jump and then move my bird feeders that far away from each one of these launching pads, then I will be bird feeder victorious. So I devised a way to measure how far each squirrel who comes in my yard jumps and I started collecting my data. Trust me, that's a whole different video. The result was that I got a sample of six squirrels and I got these distances and I just rounded them to the next whole value. And that's what you see there. Five feet, seven feet, six feet, six feet, four feet, and eight feet. And what my nefarious plan is, is to use statistics to defeat the squirrels. The idea is, is that if the feeder represents the center of my distribution, okay, then if I know on average how far and how much variation there is okay, between these squirrels who are jumping this distance, then I should be able to relocate this feeder to a point where on average squirrels won't be able to get to the feeder. Now, I'm not going to get every one of them because remember this is an average or a mean deviation, but it's going to get most of them. So to calculate MAD or the mean absolute deviation, we're going to apply a formula that says take the, take the distance each individual value falls from the average, add up the distances, right? Add up the differences or the deviations, and then just give me the average of that. So first thing I've got to do is I've got to come up with this average. The way I'm going to come up with the average is I'm simply going to apply the good old fashioned formula for the mean. Then I'm going to, according to the formula, I'm going to subtract each individual value from the mean, and then I'm going to sum them all up. Right? So remember that big uh, funny looking Greek E means add everything up, looks like the auto sum key in Excel. And once we have all of the, we have the sum of the values, we're going to divide it by N in order to get the average. That's just good old fashioned whatever grade math. So are you ready? So this is what I did. I did this all this math on my $3 Walmart calculator. I took those distances that my squirrels could jump and I came up with 36 feet. In order to find the average or the mean, remember I said this was a sample, so I used X bar. I simply took the sum of the individual values, divided it by the number of the values that I had, which was 6. And I end up with a mean of six. Love all these sixes. So remember the formula said x minus x bar. Oops, sorry, that's horrible looking. So that's what I did. I took x minus x bar gave me this. Seven minus x bar gave me this. Six minus x bar gave me that. And remember what I want is I want the average of these deviations. So to find the average of any set of numbers, what do I do? I'm going to add up all of these and I'm going to divide them by 6. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to add them together, I'm going to get my answer, I'm going to divide them by 6, I'm one step closer to defeating the squirrels. Whoa, whoa, stop. We have got a huge problem and I can't proceed. What's my problem? 
when I take these individual values, subtract them from the mean, add up all the differences, I get zero. And I'm always going to get zero. It's a mathematical law um, that if I take the individual values used to calculate the mean, subtract them from the mean, the sum is always going to be zero. And the last time I went through math, it's been a while, zero divided by six was not something we could do. So I've got to come up with a way to fix this. Enter our friend absolute value. You should remember somewhere back in the distance that if you take an individual value, a number x, and you place it between these nifty goal posts, okay, that the sign disappears. So this is where I had x, this is where I had my calculated mean, this is where I figured out what my deviation from the mean was, and now what I've done is I've simply taken the absolute value to remove these pesky negative signs that were giving me heartburn. Now I can sum up this column of numbers and I can get 6. Simply the sum of the individual values distance from the mean and then the average found by dividing it by the number of observations that I had gives me a mean or abs mean or average absolute, and that's why we mean absolute, because we use this absolute value up here, deviation of the mean of one foot. So what does that mean? It means that the average that my individual squirrels jumping distance deviates from the center of the data is one foot. So in theory, if I locate my feeder at least, least six feet, the average plus one foot, the average deviation from the nearest squirrel launching pad, on average, my bird feeder should be safe. So if I look at my feeder as the mean, which is at six feet, I add that one more foot to each one, then on average, the mean absolute deviation, the average that the distance a squirrel can jump, on average, is one foot. I should be good to go and not have fat squirrels eating my bird food. Hope this helped. See you in statistics world in the future.